Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so welcome to the new lecture of this course, Fundamentals and Applications of Dielectric Ceramics. So let's just uh, briefly do a recap of what we learnt in the last class. So in the last class, uh, maybe last couple of lectures, we started our discussion on frequency dependence of dielectric properties. So in that, uh, we looked at first the case of ideal dielectric. So in case of ideal dielectric, we said that the if you have uh, this real imaginary phase diagram, then if your voltage is V in this direction, then current leads the voltage by an angle 90 degree for a ideal dielectric and as a result, all the current is basically charging current and hence the power dissipated is equal to So, there is no power loss in an ideal dielectric because there is no, there are no losses. And then we took the case of, uh, then we moved on to what we said that uh, real dielectric. So, in case of real dielectric, we just introduced this that, you know, if you apply a voltage V, then you might have a situation that total current is basically is at certain angle, which is, so this is delta angle and this is let us say theta angle and this theta is basically 90 minus delta okay. and this total current is now sum of two currents. So, one you have one is charging current sorry and then so you have charging current and then you have loss current and this is I total okay. So, this I total is sum of I C plus I L and uh, and this angle delta is basically a representation of power dissipation. So, so tan delta is basically equal to I C divided by sorry I L divided by I C basically and uh, what it represents is how much is the loss in a, in a system. So, basically what we said is in a real dielectric if you pump in Q E you take out Q E during the reverse cycle for ideal dielectric. Whereas, for a real dielectric, there is a difference between, so if you, this is Q1, this is Q2. So, Q1 is equal to Q2 in case of ideal dielectric, which means there are no losses of charges, but in case of ideal, real dielectric, you will have loss of charges through mechanisms such as leakage or loss, ohmic loss or non-ohmic losses. We will see what they are. So, this is what we are going to analyze in this lecture, that what are these uh, uh, losses and how can you represent them uh, mathematically. So, let us now look at uh, the case of basically we are saying power dissipation, I am going to further dwell upon power, not power sorry, we will come to power later on, but uh, dielectric properties uh, versus frequency in a real dielectric. So, for a real dielectric, we said that your, uh, so we said that I t is equal to I c plus I l and uh, what basically this means is that your uh, I loss now is basically is equal to sum of g omega a c. So, this is the frequency dependent contribution and this is uh, frequency independent contribution. So, this is what basically, is. so this is conductance which is inverse of resistance. So, this is, so the total current will be now uh, I omega C plus G omega A C plus G D C into V, okay. So, this is what we said last, last time. So, when, when your, uh, when you, when your field applied is uh, D C that is omega is equal to 0. In that case, we will say that I t is equal to basically I loss and this is essentially G d c into V. So, we are what we are going to see is that basically the d c contribution from basically the leakage current is the current that we will observe. So, when you make d c measurements on a dielectric, you are basically looking at the 
uh, ohmic losses in the system which has frequency independent. And this GDC is nothing but 1 over R which is 1 over the ohmic resistance of the system. Now an alternative way to express the, so you can express the dielectric properties of a system in terms of current but we will come to that later on. So you can also, one can also express uh, the real dielectrics. properties by using complex permittivity. So, now that the charge, the current itself is, is uh, frequency dependent and independent which means the permittivity also has to be frequency dependent. So, we examine this permittivity as epsilon prime minus I epsilon double prime or it can also be uh, referred as let us say if we say in terms of kappa then its k star is equal to epsilon divided by epsilon naught which is nothing but epsilon r so you can so this can be also epsilon r star okay epsilon r star or kappa star is equal to kappa prime minus i kappa double prime okay so this so total so basically the idea of doing that is that the current in the dielectric can be represented in terms of material property that is called as the dielectric permittivity. So, we will we'll see how we do that. So, basically the, so we can say that C of a dielectric, the capacitance of a dielectric is given as K star into C naught, right. C naught is the uh, capacitance of a vacuum capacitor and K star is the, uh, the, the permitting of a dielectric, the real dielectric that we are using. And we know that Q is equal to nothing but C V which is equal to k into c naught into v okay so if i now use uh, we say that uh, we have said that ic is equal to i total it minus i w and uh, uh, basically so this is so we can say that ic plus i loss w or I can say that basically this is I loss. Okay. So, this is I c plus I loss w is equal to I t minus I w is equal to 0 because this I l was sum of I l w plus I l w is equal to 0. So, this is the A c component and this is the D c component and this is equal to basically d q by d t. Right. This is the frequency dependent uh, concentration. Now, uh, in the on the left hand side, you can see that we have only the frequency dependent uh, uh, loss current. On the right hand side, we have we have the uh, total current minus the uh, DC current. So we can say now that I T minus I omega is equal to zero. This is equal to dQ by dT, and dQ by dT will be k star c naught into i omega v right if you take v as v, v naught exponential i omega t and then differentiate and do the mathematics and then replace this k in terms of k prime minus i k k or kappa are interchangeable in terms of words but actually speaking it's kappa okay so this becomes this expression so which means that we can write i t to be equal to i omega c naught kappa prime v plus omega into kappa double prime c naught v plus g d c v. What is g d c v is basically i d c right. So, this is what is i d c. Now, we can see that in the first uh, two terms in this case these are frequency dependent and this term is essentially frequency independent okay or you can say among this the first term is the charging current and these two terms are basically the the loss current terms so now, now you have to compare the equation that we yielded that we said that overall conductance is equal to G D C plus 
g omega that is a c right that we said earlier. So, here we say we can say that g omega a c is equal to omega kappa double prime c naught into v. So, this is basically is what the conductance omega k double prime c naught. So, g v was it it was g v g a c v. So, g a c v will be omega double prime c sorry not v there is no there, there is no v there. Okay. So, uh, this is what it is and we, exp we express this tan delta the loss we, we define a new quantity called as loss tangent it is represented by tan delta and this tan delta is nothing but I L divided by I C and this will be equal to G D C plus omega k double prime or kappa double prime C naught divided by omega k prime C naught right this is the charging current. So, this looks like a complex expression. So, assuming that G D C is smaller than omega kappa C naught the tan delta is written as um, we can say uh, it will be kappa double prime divided by kappa prime. So, basically uh, the dissipation factor or the tan uh, loss tangent which was equal to ratio of loss current to charging current is considering that ohmic losses are smaller it is nothing but the ratio of imaginary part of the dielectric permittivity to the real part of the dielectric permittivity. So, if your so if your tan delta is high what it means is that your k double prime is high ok it is proportional to basically k. So, higher the loss tangent uh, higher the loss tangent which means higher the imaginary part of your uh, dielectric permittivity will be. So, if you look at for uh, various systems such as let us say we take material we take the value of epsilon r prime or kappa prime and then we take tan delta into 10 over minus 4. So, if you take for example, for something like Al 2 O 3, Al 2 O 3 has a value of about 10 and the loss tangent is 5 to 20 into 10 over minus 4 for a good dielectric. If you look at S i O 2, its value is 3.8 or 3.9 and it is about 2 into 10 over minus 4. If you look at something like P V C, it is about 3 and this is 160 more lossy system because it is uh, amorphous it has more defects as a result it has more loss. And if you look at barium titanate something like barium titanate, barium titanate has very high dielectric constant and it also tends to have a little bit higher loss as compared to uh, other systems. In general what you will see is that uh, the more defects in the material is more the tan delta will be. So, tan delta basically is loss in the system. So, essentially in the phasor diagram as we drew, so if this is your uh, V, this is let us say your I T. So, this so this angle delta more this angle is higher the loss current will be and as appropriately your I L will I C will reduce in number. So, basically what this will represent is loss in the system this is dependent upon things like uh, purity level defects. So, this could be ionic defects as well as microstructural defects. such as porosity, grain boundaries etcetera and then we will have uh, also dependent upon temperature. So, in general you will see that as you increase the defect if you increase the impurities which are which create defects. So, we saw in defect chemistry there are certain impurities which can give rise to defects. So, if you have more of those impurities you will have more defects as a result you will have more tan delta. Similarly, if you have ionic defects in the system because of conditions like temperature and partial pressure of oxygen you will have 
more losses in the system. Similarly, uh, microstructural defects such as porosity, grain boundary and uh, uh, you know uh, antiphase boundary, twins etc. They will they all have potential to give rise to maybe not necessarily twins, but surely grain boundaries, small angle and low angle grain boundaries. And then temperature in general, in general as you increase the temperature, the, the loss in the system um, uh, increases. So, that, so and this is a very important parameter in tan delta. So, when you measure the dielectric properties of a system, the idea is to for a good dielectric application, the idea is to minimize the tan delta value. So, lower the tan delta means good uh, dielectric, uh, you mean a good dielectric it is. So, now having known that this, so you can write this basically, uh, so k star can be written as k prime minus i k double prime or you can also write as epsilon star epsilon r star which is equal to epsilon r prime minus i epsilon r double prime. Some people also write it as epsilon uh, epsilon star which is basically epsilon prime minus i epsilon double prime, but epsilon star is nothing but uh, epsilon naught into epsilon r star. So, these are different ways of representing the uh, dielectric uh, properties of a given system. Now, let us see what the, um, so if I just briefly go through it what we have done, we have, uh, we started with the dielectric properties uh, versus frequent, uh, so we, we say that total current is equal to charging current plus loss current, loss current is sum of uh, AC and DC component, total current as a result becomes uh, so, total total so charging current we worked out earlier it will be I omega C V right. So, this is total current and correspondingly loss current will be total G conductance multiplied by the voltage total G is equal to so this is total G total G is equal to G omega A C that is uh, uh, frequency dependent and the D C that is the ohmic component. So, when the field is DC then of course, omega, omega is equal to 0 then the, la, then the current that you measure is basically the loss current, there is no frequency dependence in the system. So, how do you relate that previous equation to the, to the dielectric properties? So, what we, we express the dielectric properties for such as dielectric constant in terms of uh, complex properties such as epsilon can be written in the form of epsilon prime minus i epsilon double prime. And, uh, since epsilon is equal to basically epsilon naught into epsilon r star or k star, we can write this in terms of epsilon r star or k star which is equal to uh, k, k prime minus i k double prime or you can say epsilon r prime minus i epsilon r double prime. And we also know that capacitance is equal to k star into c naught and we know q is equal to C v. So, appropriately we can now write an expression for current because we know that the current that you frequency dependent current that you measure because now the charge is not equal to only C naught V, charge is equal to K star which is a complex quantity multiplied by C V, which means this variation of charge is going to represent all the variation of frequency dependent. So, time, time dependent variation of this charge is going to be the frequency dependent component of current, which is I C plus I L omega. This is equal to d q by d t and this is nothing but I t minus the d c component. So, total current minus that. So, total minus the DC component is basically the frequency variation uh, or time dependent variation. And then we took uh, what is uh, I t minus I, I omega naught dq by dt and from this if you expand it further you can see that there are two frequency dependent terms one is I omega C naught k prime v second is omega k double prime C naught v plus g, g dc v. So, this first frequency dependent term is the charging current this is I omega C naught k prime v this is the real part of imaginary constant that represents the charging current and the imaginary part represents the loss current. So, this is what we worked out in terms of tan delta. So, tan delta is ratio of loss current to charging current and if let us say the ohmic part is smaller as compared to the frequency dependent part then we can consider tan delta to be equal to kappa prime minus or you can say this is epsilon r double prime divided by epsilon r prime. So, now what we will do is that we will look at power dissipation in a
in a real dielectric. So, for to do this what we do is that we first express the conductivity of a dielectric So, we write sigma A c as basically you have a sigma d c component which is from the d c conduction plus you can say the, uh, the, the other component that is the uh, frequency independent component that will be omega k double prime into epsilon naught okay. and uh, this is basically equal to you can say omega um, epsilon naught uh, kappa prime into tan delta considering if uh, sigma d c is very small as compared to the a c component all right. So, if c sigma d c is very small. So, basically what we are saying here is sigma d c we are assuming that sigma is proportional to 1 over r. So, you can see that things like uh, basically sigma is nothing but 1 over rho okay, and r is equal to rho l y a. So, you can say that uh, this will be so r is equal to rho l divided by a. So, rho will be equal to l. Uh, so, rho will be equal to l divided. So, this will be equal to l divided by r a. So, essentially sigma is nothing but if you leave the dimensions apart sigma is nothing but 1 over r and 1 over r is what? g. So, essentially sigma scales with g and that is what we have done we have equal. So, this is basically g a c is equal to g d c plus g omega g a c omega. So, this is what the total uh, so, you can say this is total conductivity essentially uh, sigma dielectric essentially you can say ok alright. Uh, so, if this is equal to this then you can approximate this as if sigma d c is very small then you can approx approximate this as sigma a c which is equal to omega k naught into f kappa kappa prime um, omega epsilon naught into kappa prime tan delta. So, the time average power loss can be expressed as we can write this as p average is equal to 1 over the time period integration over the time period into uh, i loss into v dt right and this will be equal to 1 over time period integration over the time period we can say this is omega kappa double prime epsilon naught uh, sorry um, you can say this is this is C naught this is C naught ok. So, this is C naught into plus G d c into V naught square uh, cos square omega t d t ok. And if, uh, if we say that as we assumed earlier that G d c is very small as compared to uh, G a c then we can write uh, this p average is equal to uh, 1 over gamma uh, 0 to 1 over integrated over time period omega kappa prime c naught into v naught square cos square omega t d t ok and uh, this will be equal to. Uh, so, v will become v square because one v term will come from the current term and then second the voltage term itself. So, v will multiply itself. So, it will become if you take b v is equal to v naught cos omega t. So, one v term will come from the current and second v term will be itself v because the, 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 the current was omega kappa double prime c naught v. This is the current and then multiplied by v naught cos omega t. So, this is also v naught cos omega t. So, it will multiply itself. So, p average in this case will be if you now do the integration this will come out to be 1 over 2 omega upper prime c naught into v naught square. So, this will be basically you can say half of g a c into v naught square ok. Alternatively you can write this as p average is equal to half into omega. Uh, so, 
this was equal to k prime, k double prime i can also write it in terms of k prime tan delta because we can we know that k double prime is equal to k prime into tan delta right so i can replace this here this will be c naught into v naught square you can also write this as half v naught square into omega c tan delta because c is nothing but k prime into c naught okay the real terms so this is what is the uh, so if c naught is equal to let's say epsilon naught a over d which is the dimension of a system e naught is equal to v naught divided by d so you have a capacitor with plate area a and the separation as d then you can define these quantities and v will be equal to a into sorry e naught is equal to v naught uh, divided by d so the dissipated power density you can write it as uh, and the volume will be equal to a into d so if you write this as p average divided by volume this can be written as half omega epsilon naught kappa prime tan delta into e naught square so if you now make uh, if you now make the uh, frequency dependent zero frequency equal to zero this becomes equal to zero right so the only term that you will be left with is the dc term which we have ignored so when frequency is zero then ac component will vanish so you are left with only dc term which we have ignored because we have considered this to be smaller than the ac component so if frequency is zero then what we will have is g will be equal to gdc which is nothing but 1 over r in such case your pv p average will be equal to i square divided by r right i into um uh basically gv yeah so uh sorry i square r not i square divided by r i square r okay so it's nothing but g into v g is 1 over r v is uh sorry g is what am i writing g is 1 over r and power density was equal to um g into v not square okay so let me see yeah yeah so g g is equal to so p average will be equal to g into v and g is uh, and this is integrated over the uh, so yeah so this will be equal to uh, v not square whatever it was dt right so this will be equal to g into basically v square and this will be equal to 1 over r into i square r square so this will be equal to i square r okay so this is what g uh, this will be the 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 dc loss this is in the absence of frequency dependent loss that is when frequency is equal to zero however you can see the the frequency dependent con contribution is uh, the power loss increases as your tan delta value increases or you can say your epsilon uh, kappa double prime value increases so your p average p will go up as your kappa double prime goes up or tan delta goes up and this also means that as you increase the frequency then also the power loss will uh, go up so this is what it is in terms of dielectric property representation in terms of frequency so um basically what we have seen that we have a loss current and the charging current the loss current has two parts the frequency dependent part frequency independent part and uh, the ratio of uh, loss current to charging current is basically a dissipation factor so higher the dissipation factor more the power loss in the system is going to be so this you can work out again and go through it again and again it's a little complex to understand but if you go through it few times you will understand it so in the next class we will start our discussion on Uh, essentially um, 
looking at the uh, little bit more detailed treatment of uh, frequency dependence of dielectric properties from a microscopic scale. What we have seen right now is the macroscopic scale, but what we want to see right, so because frequency dielectric constant varies in various steps as a function of frequency, we need to understand the microscopic mechanisms. Thank you.